Oh hallelujah, we're going to deal with now the rest of the 501 to 613 laws. You will actually find this series in the playlist N times 777 if you want to go through them. This list is a continuation of sacrifices and offerings from the previous video. I will make a comment at the end of this list, but let's get into it. That a woman after childbirth shall bring an offering when she is clean, Leviticus 12.6. That a leper shall bring a sacrifice after he is cleansed, Leviticus 14.10. That a man having an issue shall bring a sacrifice after he is cleansed of his issue, Leviticus 15.13-15. A woman having an issue shall bring a sacrifice after she is cleansed of her issue, Leviticus 15:28 to 30 To observe on Yom Kippur the service appointed for that day, regarding the sacrifice confessions sending away of the scapegoat, Leviticus 16, 3, 34. Not to slaughter beasts set apart for sacrifices outside the sanctuary, Leviticus 17, 3 to 4. Not to eat flesh of a sacrifice that has been left over beyond the time appointed for its consumption, Leviticus 19.8. Not to sanctify blemished cattle for sacrifice on the altar, Leviticus 22.20. This text prohibits such beasts being set apart for sacrifice on the altar. That every animal offered up shall be without blemish, Leviticus 22.21. Not to afflict a blemish on cattle set apart for sacrifice. Leviticus 22.21 Not to slaughter blemished cattle as sacrifices Leviticus 22.22 Not to burn the limbs of blemished cattle upon the altar Leviticus 22.22 Not to sprinkle the blood of blemished cattle upon the altar Leviticus 22.24 Not to offer up a blemished beast that comes from non-Israelites Leviticus 22.25 That sacrifices of cattle can only take place when they are at least 8 days old Leviticus 22.27 not to leave any flesh of the thanksgiving offering until the morning, Leviticus 22.30. To offer up the meal offering of the Omar on the morrow after the first day of Passover together with one lamb, Leviticus 23.10. Not to eat bread made of new grain before the Omar of barley has been offered up on the second day of Passover, Leviticus 23.14. Not to eat roasted grain of the new produce before that time, Leviticus 23.14. Not to eat fresh ears of the new grain before that time, Leviticus 23.14. To bring on Shavuot loaves of bread together with sacrifices, which are then offered up in connection with the loaves, Leviticus 23.17-20. To offer up an additional sacrifice on Passover, Leviticus 23.36. That one who vows to the Lord's the monetary value of a person shall pay the amount appointed in the scriptural portion, Leviticus 27, 2-8. If a beast is exchanged for one that had been set apart as an offering, both become sacred, Leviticus 27, 10. Not to exchange a beast set aside for sacrifice, Leviticus 27, 10. That one who vows to the Lord that monetary value of an unclean beast shall pay its value, Leviticus 27, 11-13. That one who vows the value of his house shall pay according to the appraisal of the Kohen, um, Leviticus 27, 11-13. That one who sacrifices to the Lord a portion of his field shall pay um, according to the Estimation appointed in the scriptural portion, Leviticus 27, 16 and 24. Not to transfer a beast set apart for sacrifice from one class of sacrifices to another, Leviticus 27, 26. To decide in regard to dedicated property as to which is sacred to the Lord and which belongs to the Kohenin, Leviticus 27, 28. Not to sell a field devoted to the Lord, Leviticus 27, 28. Not to redeem a field devoted to the Lord, Leviticus 27, 28, to make a confession before the Lord of any sin that one has committed when bringing a sacrifice and at other times, Numbers 5, 67, not to put olive oil in the meal offering of a woman suspected of adultery, Numbers 5, 15, not to put frankincense on it, Numbers 5, 15, to offer up the regular sacrifice daily to lambs as burnt offerings, Numbers 28, 3, to offer up additional sacrifice every Shabbat, two lambs, Numbers 28-9. Offer additional sacrifices on the new moon, Numbers 28-11. To bring an additional offering on Shavuot, Numbers 28-26-27. Additional offerings in Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sukkot, Shemnai, Ezret, which is the festival by itself. 
they're all from Numbers 29, to bring all offerings, whether obligatory or free will, on the first festival after these were incurred, Deuteronomy 12, 5-6, nor to offer up sacrifices outside the sanctuary, Deuteronomy 12, 13, to offer all sacrifices in the sanctuary, Deuteronomy 12, 14, to redeem cattle set apart for sacrifices that contradicted disqualifying blemishes after which they may be eaten by anyone, Deuteronomy 12, 15, not to eat of the unblemished firstling outside Jerusalem, Deuteronomy 12, 17, not to eat the flesh of a burnt offering, Deuteronomy 12, 17, this is a prohibition applying to every trespasser not to enjoy any of the holy things, if he does so he commits a trespass, that the Kohanim shall not eat the flesh of a sin offering or guilt offering outside the courtyard of the sanctuary, Deuteronomy 12.17, not to eat of the flesh of the sacrifices that are holy in minor degree before the blood has been sprinkled on the altar, Deuteronomy 12.17, that the Kohanim shall not eat the first fruits before they are set down in the courtyard of the sanctuary, Deuteronomy 12.17, to take trouble to bring sacrifices to the sanctuary from places outside the land of Israel, Deuteronomy 12.26, not to eat the flesh of beasts set apart as sacrifices that have been rendered unfit to be offered up by de deliberately inflicted blemishes, Deuteronomy 14.3, not to work with cattle set apart for sacrifice, Deuteronomy 15.19, not to share beasts set apart for sacrifice, Deuteronomy 15.19, not to leave any portion of the festival offering brought on the 14th of Nisan, which is Aviv, the first month, unto the third day, Deuteronomy 16.4. Not to offer up a beast that has a temporary blemish, Deuteronomy 17.1. Not to bring sacrifices out of the hire of a harlot or prince of a dog, apparently a euphemism for sodomy, Deuteronomy 23.19. To read the portion prescribed on bringing the first fruits, Deuteronomy 26, 5 to 10. Now, most of these laws are sacrificial laws, which of course Paul was referring to. Um, they are no longer in effect, they're done away because there's no temple. The next set of laws is ritual purity and impurity, that eight species of creeping things defile by contact, Leviticus 11, 29 to 30. That foods become defiled by contact with unclean things, Leviticus 11:34. Anyone who touches the carcass of a beast that died of itself shall be unclean, Leviticus 11.39. A dying woman is unclean like a menstruating woman in terms of uncleanliness, Leviticus 12.2-5. A leper is unclean and defiles, Leviticus 13.2.46. Lepers shall be universally recognised as such by the prescribed marks, so too all other unclean persons should declare themselves as such, Leviticus 13.45. That a leprous garment is unclean and defiles, Leviticus 13, 47 to 49. A leprous house defiles, Leviticus 14, 34, 46. That a man having a running issue defiles, Leviticus 15, 1 to 15. The seed of copulation defiles, Leviticus 15, 16. That the purification from all kinds of defilement shall be effected by immersion in the waters of the mikvah, Leviticus 15, 16. That a menstruating woman is unclean and defiles others, Leviticus 15, 19 to 24. That a woman having a running issue defiles, Leviticus 15, 25 to 27. To carry out the ordinance of the red heifer so that sashes will always be available, Numbers 19, 19. That a corpse defiles, Numbers 19, 11 to 16. That the waters of separation defile one who is clean and cleanse the unclean from pollution by a dead body. Numbers 19, 19-22 um, Continuing on leprosy again Not to drove off the hair of the skull Leviticus 13, 33 That the procedure of cleansing leprosy Whether of a man of a house Takes place with cedar wood, hyssop, scarlet thread Two birds and running water Leviticus 14, 1-7 That leper shall shave all his hair Leviticus 14, 9 uh, not to pluck out the marks of leprosy, Deuteronomy 24, 8. Laws on the king. Not to curse a ruler, that is the king of the head of the college in the land of Israel, Exodus 22, 27. To appoint a king, Deuteronomy 17, 15. Not to appoint as 
ruler over Israel, one who comes from non-Israelites, Deuteronomy 17.15. The king shall not acquire an excessive number of horses, Deuteronomy 17.16. The king shall not have an excessive number of wives, Deuteronomy 17.17. That he shall not accumulate an excessive quantity of gold and silver, Deuteronomy 17.17. 17 that the king shall write a scroll of the Torah for himself, in addition to the one that every person should write, so that he writes two scrolls, Deuteronomy 17, 18. Nazarites, that a Nazarite shall not drink wine, or anything mixed with wine, which tastes like wine, and even if the wine of the mixture has turned sour, it is prohibited to him, Numbers 6, 3. That he shall not eat fresh grapes, Numbers 6, 3. That he shall not eat dry grapes, which is raisins, Numbers 6.3. He shall not eat kernels of grapes, Numbers 6.4. Not eat the skins of the grapes, um, 6.4. Nazarite shall permit his hair to grow, Numbers 6.5. That the Nazarite shall not cut his hair, Numbers 6.5. That he shall not enter any covered structure where there is a dead body, Numbers 6.6. 6. That a Nazarite shall not defile himself for any dead person, by being in the presence of the corpse, Numbers 6-7, that the Nazarite shall shave his hair when he brings his offering at the completion of the period of Nazarite ship, or with that period if he has become defiled, Numbers 6-9. Finally, wars, that those engaged in warfare shall not fear their enemies, nor be panic-stricken by them in battle, Deuteronomy 3-22, 7-21, 23-23. To anoint a special Kohenin to speak to the soldiers in a war, Deuteronomy 22. In a permissive war, as distinguished from obligatory ones, to observe the procedure prescribed in the Torah, Deuteronomy 20.10. Not to keep alive an individual of the seven Canaanite nations, Deuteronomy 20.16. To exterminate the seven Canaanite nations from the land of Israel, Deuteronomy 20.17. Not to destroy fruit trees wantonly in warfare, Deuteronomy 20, 19-20. To deal with a beautiful woman taken captive in war in the manner prescribed in the Torah, Deuteronomy 21, 10-14. Not to sell a beautiful woman taken captive in war, Deuteronomy 21, 14. Not to degrade a beautiful woman taken by captive in the condition of a bondwoman, Deuteronomy 21, 14. Not to offer peace to the Ammonites, and the Moabites before waging war on them, as should be done to other nations, Deuteronomy 23, 7, that anyone who is unclean shall not enter the camp of the Levites, Deuteronomy 23, 11, to have a place outside the camp for sanitary purposes, Deuteronomy 23, 13, to keep that place sanitary, Deuteronomy 23, 14 to 15, always to remember what Amalek did, Deuteronomy 25, 17, that the evil done to us by Amalek shall not be forgotten, Deuteronomy 25.19, to destroy the seed of Amalek, Deuteronomy 25.19. And that's the final law that we have from the website, Judaism 101. Now basically I've not been able to go through each of these laws entirely individually, but um, you can see that many of them have purpose for today. But obviously the sacrificial laws as we mentioned, are no longer required until there's a third temple. They'll bring in the Levitical priesthood again, and they'll do the abomination and desolation spoken of in Daniel, which uh, Christ prophesied. Um, and uh, you'll see all these things happening. But um, I thank you for um, reading um, through with me these uh, main 613 laws, in which there are more, um, in which uh, I did add a few more, uh, in the videos, that, um, especially the one about the previous one in tithing, and um, there are many other more laws that are not really sort of touched upon or mentioned in this. This is more or less exclusively um, for Israel, the different classes in Israel, the priesthood of Israel, and the kingship, and so on. But you can see basically um, the close relation to what Jesus Christ. Um, may set up when he returns and there's a reference in Ezekiel to offerings being offered again to God um, in a temple where, where the Messiah and um, the King shall rule so again th these could be free will offerings because obviously Yeshua is the final Levitical sacrifice um, so I just want to end on that note thank you again, may the Lord bless you and keep you Shalom